Welcome back to another episode of The Glacier Guys. I'm Ethan Halesha. And I'm Joey Fernandez. And today we were um, supposed to have a few guests on, but something came up. So hopefully we'll see them on next week. Not going to say too much about that, but um, it's yeah. just me and Joey this week. Back to the uh, the old school Glacier Guys. Oh, yeah. Some uh, some of you OG listeners. <laughs> uh, this is going to be like our old episode. So. For the, all of uh, nine months ago when we started this podcast. Yeah, <laughs> the nine long ones. You stuck around this long, I guess you're an OG. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, biggest thing in sports right now, I'd say, is the baseball playoffs. So we could we could dig into that. Yeah, uh, I think that's probably the most exciting thing that we'll cover today. For sure. Um, well, we'll start with the uh, the Astros and the Red Sox. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, that game was that game was pretty good with the nail biter last night. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was it was pretty close. It was two one basically for most of the game. Right. Um, Zach Greinke started kind of <laughs> laid a laid a donut out there. He gave up a home run, and then after that, the Red Sox bats just kind of went stale. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Nick Pavetta, uh, I mean, he he was not even really in the rotation like that. He was uh, coming out of the bullpen for most of the postseason. Comes out, throws four and two thirds, uh, mm-hmm. one in, uh, one run ball. Uh, looked very solid actually. Yeah. Um, I think I think the game was a lot closer than it than it uh, showed at the end because oh, yeah, it ended sure. up being nine to two with the Astros scoring seven in the ninth. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't even know what you could really even say about that. There's, <laughs> there's, there's not much to say, and that I mean, just with the call and everything, that game could have easily gone into the bottom of the ninth, tied up. Yeah, for uh, those who didn't see it, it was uh, two two in the ninth, uh, and it was a two two count to Jordan Alvarez uh, or Kyle Tucker, one of the two yeah, lefties. W- yeah. Uh, and it was a uh, it was a two two count with two outs in the ninth, and uh, if there was a there was a curveball uh, in the top. Uh, up and away in the zone, but mm-hmm. it was a strike, and they didn't get the call. And then the seven runs ended up being scored all after that, yep. which is kind of crazy. And uh, that kind of just sucked the air out of the ballpark, and for the, sure. all momentum was kind of lost for that whole game. And Altuve had the uh, game tying home run in the eighth, right? Yeah, uh, and I mean, you knew it was just kind of bound to happen. Uh, he's just always that guy. Uh-huh. And it's kind of, I think he's I mean, he's tied for fourth all time and playoff home runs already so something yeah yeah uh yeah. he was tied with jeter last time i saw that put yeah, him they over both i have believe 20 i think oh uh, that did that one put him over i believe that was 21 okay. yeah and then manny Mer- Mer- uh, ramirez just has like 28 yeah so. 27 <laughs> or 28 but yeah. uh yeah uh i mean it's just it's weird because like altuve is batting like three for 16 in the series and yeah. he's got two home runs and like he just when you need a clutch hit, he's that guy. He's you know? always a threat. Uh, any anywhere inside when you when you pitch him inside, you're just bound to give up home runs. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Uh, he's he's just uh, disgusting. Uh, even in the playoffs, he just kind of turns it up a notch. I know he's he's only got three hits in the series, but mm-hmm. he's always he's always getting the hits when it counts. Mm-hmm. Uh, same same goes for that whole Astros lineup. It's just so annoying to face. I mean, uh, we know that as Sox fans. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, I I think this was a huge game. I think the Red Sox kind of needed this one. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was I was about to like when I I said it last night. I'm like, this Red Sox may have just lost the series, like, just yeah. from this game. That's not even hyperbole either. That's just kind of truth, honestly. Yeah. Cause, uh, I mean, I, the Astros did empty the take as far as their bullpen goes, but mm-hmm. I don't think that matters because their lineup. All it takes for them is to get a little hot, and it's kind of impossible to get them out. Yeah, I, no, I know seriously. The, the Red Sox are super hot too, but they kind of they kind of swapped roles this game. Like they hit that one home run in the first inning, and then and I they mean, were just <laughs> stale. Like where were said. they at the rest of the game? Exactly. You know? yeah. uh, I mean, that's not not a great sign for Boston fans. Uh, I mean, it is technically two two, so you would think it's an even an, an even playing field but i mean as far as momentum goes i feel like that's a big thing in baseball oh for sure it's definitely swayed in the astros favor and I, th- I think the fact that the astros didn't just win like three to two i think the fact that they scored seven runs and won nine to two like they yeah. have all the momentum right now yeah i mean that's that's not a good sign yeah. I, I mean as much as i don't want the astros to win personally uh that it looks like they are going to how long is is mccullers uh he's done for the series uh and potentially also the world series if they make it okay. um so that's not very good for them but yeah. i mean they've made up for it uh especially with their offense because yeah. the red sox i mean their pitching isn't all that strong either they just haven't really been tested all that much because the games have been so they've been just scoring so many runs at will right uh like yes they had the red sox haven't recorded a save this whole postseason yet really so nobody even really knows who their closer technically would be yeah because all their games have ended in a walk-off or uh 
just scoring nine runs and uh, <laughs> see a next game. Like basically, like it's that's it's, crazy. Yeah, though. it's pretty funny to think about. But yeah, I mean, uh, they haven't really been in like a crazy amount of close games compared to everyone else. So I'm just trying to see if the lineups are out because I know the games at 4:08. Yeah, the lineups are out. Okay. Um, the uh, the starters for today are Chris Sale and Fran Valdez. So uh, they're going to need a big start out of Sale. I know uh, game one, the Astros won with the same matchup, but, I mean, Chris Sale's working his way back from injury more and more, and he's getting more comfortable as every start goes. So, Mm. I mean, for Boston's sake, you'd you'd hope that he he comes out and is shut down like good old Sale, but I don't don't see that happening with the momentum right now. I don't either. uh, You you just kind of hope that Boston can uh, come out and have the same type of offense they've had uh, throughout the other parts of the series. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. I mean, the game's in a couple hours. So yeah, I think, I don't know, I, I could see the Strohs winning this series in six. But Yeah, that's that's my thing personally. Yeah, that's probably the guess I would have. Um, mm-hmm. But who knows? Uh, baseball is very momentum shifted. So if the Red Sox come out hot and score a few runs, uh, the series could be shifted just like that. And they're at home too for this game. So Yeah, I mean, kind of like the next series we're going to talk about mm-hmm. uh, with the Dodgers uh, being down to the Braves 2-1. Yeah. But uh, yesterday um, being... <laughs> it's uh, like we're seeing uh, a repeat of last year. Yeah, a wild ride of a game. Uh Kind of, kind of scary how how crazy that lineup can be when they just literally just one flip of a switch. Oh, the, the Dodgers. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, you, like yesterday, it so- it seemed like they were down and out uh, for most of the game. They came out hot, scored two, and then uh, the game just slowly tailed off. Uh, Charlie Morton was struggling. He had he had six walks in a start, but he, they found a way to squeeze five innings out of him, and then eventually. Gavin Lux drops the ball in center field, and the Braves get a big inning out of that. Yep. And then it all kind of tailspinned, and uh, they were losing 5-2 to two after seven innings. And then all it took was Cody Bellinger hitting a bomb, and then Dude, they just got the I momentum was, completely sw- sw- I was I was uh, watching the game with my favorite. dad, and I'm like, I could just I could just see Bellinger like hitting a home run here, yeah. I called it. And what's it called? It's just like, I don't know, you can't script it any better with him struggling this year with injuries and everything and just, like, coming into the playoffs and showing that he's still got that, like, you know what yeah. I mean, the it factor when it counts the most. It's just, it's so awesome. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, and it doesn't completely surprise me because, you know, he's been there before. Yeah, so. I'm a big Cody Bellinger fan, honestly. I yeah. think he's a, I think he's a good player. I think uh, this year was kind of an anomaly. Uh, I mean, either way, if he still couldn't figure out – the uh, hitting uh, aspect of his game, he still brings a lot of value to the team as far as every other aspect. So, yep. but I, he's just shown up continuously on this playoff and on this playoff yeah, run, he's like batting over three hundred. Yeah, uh, he sent them to the CS against the Giants, uh, getting that big hit, that single uh, off of their closer, so mm-hmm. uh, Doval. So I mean, it's. Uh, pretty crazy to see how how fast the series momentum could just be changed like that i mean mm-hmm. they still have an uphill battle being down 2-1 but uh with another game at dodger stadium it's it's yeah, definitely not it, out of the dodgers reach. definitely have the momentum now if the braves would have went up 3-0 i don't think i could see the dodgers coming out of no that, I, but yeah i would have given them probably a five percent chance at most yeah honestly and then now i'd almost give this <laughs> the edge to the dodgers in the yeah, series i i think even I though they are down to one yeah i think uh i think this is a a seven inning or a seven game series for me personally mm-hmm. uh i think this is just it's getting it's getting a little it's getting a little crazy i think with this series i don't know i think this is probably the closer out of the two even though it's well the the astros and red sox are farther along. i would say yeah i'd say that the the Astros have a better chance of beating the Red Sox as opposed to the Dodgers beating the Braves. I right agree now. with that. Um, I also feel like uh, the Astros. Uh, I feel like the AL series in general are a lot of blowouts because the teams are a lot more high powered and the NL games are a lot more slow pitching based. Mm. So uh, the games are just naturally closer because there's less runs scored to get more separation. So mm. I think that makes it more interesting. But I, I personally. Uh, I, I got all the NL picks right uh, f- as far as my uh, picks before the playoffs, so I'm going to mm-hmm. stick with the Dodgers in seven. Um, and then I didn't have the Astros or Red Sox in this, so I think I'm just going to... You had the White Sox, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to go with the Astros. Oh, you thought the Dodgers were going to beat the White Sox in the World Series if it came down to that? Uh, no, I had the White Sox beating oh, the okay. Dodgers. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it's kind of interesting. But I also did have a bet with the Braves and the White Sox in the World Series, so that would have been cool if that hit, but... Um, you know, <laughs> yeah. can't always happen. Uh, their buddy Eli, I think he got every single pick wrong. 
on his yeah uh, yeah he had the giants day. going to yeah. the world series versus the rays yeah <laughs> uh i mean there was another there's like another analyst who had every pick wrong and i mean that's impressive in itself <laughs> yeah so you think it's going to be dodgers astros uh yeah i i before the series i predicted dodgers red Sox like mm-hmm. before the cs started when we know the matchups for sure but uh i think with this swing game i think it's gonna be the astros i'm changing if my pick. it is dodgers astros the bad blood between these yeah teams, and, like, it's gonna be insane yeah i think any case scenario here is not a bad series at all oh I yeah think, for sure i think maybe the most boring might be the braves and astros i feel like that matchup doesn't really have any bad blood towards it mm. but i feel like the red Sox and dodgers would be cool just, just because two historic teams. That and the 2018 factor, along with Mookie being on the yeah, Dodgers yep. now, I think that's cool. I think that, that storyline's nice to play out. And the dodgers Astros for, I mean, 2017 World Series, yeah. all that cheating and all that stuff yeah. going on. Uh, and then the Braves and Red Sox, I think it's just two high-powered offenses, uh, like with maybe not the biggest pitching names, mm-hmm. uh, just kind of duking it out. You know, I, I like that, like that storyline too. Me too. I do hope it's Dodgers and Astros, though, because I just – I think that would be the most exciting matchup. Yeah, I, I'd definitely be cool with that. Um, but like like we said, the game this game's also playing out today, so uh, we'll definitely have more information on that uh, later oh, on. The uh, later game. I'm no, assuming. this one's at four o'clock, and then the Red Sox are at six, I believe, or something like that. Dodgers. Let's see. But yeah, I mean. Oh, Dodgers are playing at seven o eight tonight. Oh, it's the other way around. Yeah, and oh, okay. the Red Sox start a little after four. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, both both series are really turning out to be great. I'm happy neither like sweeps or anything are gonna yeah. be over in like five. That's, I I I don't see either of those happening. No, well, I don't well the five at least for the Dodgers, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's been uh, a good playoff so far, I'd say. Yeah, I mean, outside of our White Sox, <laughs> kind of getting handled pretty easily. I mean, it's it's still awesome. Just I don't know. I th- I feel like playoff baseball is just so different than every other playoffs in sports and. Yeah. Very unpredictable and you any know, given day. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, that should do it for baseball for now. Uh we can move on to some football for a little bit. The Bears <laughs> played the Packers. Um I mean I didn't expect us to win. Yeah. But like I'm I'm always disappointed when we do lose, you know. Yeah, I uh <laughs> I I didn't expect much, but the the classic Bears Packers fashion is the Bears coming out with hot. either like a nice turnover or a nice touchdown, they maybe even like a touchdown so and a field goal. Yeah. I mean, like we've seen, <laughs> we've seen some some great starts from the Bears teams, and then after that, it just kind of all goes down the drain every yeah. time. You just feel the momentum slowly shifting with that the free play that Justin Fields thought he had, and he probably should have had, uh, and throwing it down the field and it being an interception. You just kind of felt like in my head, I felt like that was the game. Uh, I don't know about you. He but had he had two of those plays right where yeah. he just threw like the second way one, down the field and there was a pick. The second one was more on a Rob I think. Uh, he uh, he kind of just stopped running his route. Uh, looking at it afterwards, which is kind of annoying. Uh, he's done that. He did that a few times last game. Uh, but that's that's a whole other topic uh, with him not even really showing much effort this year yeah. and just having a down year in general. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I I think I think Justin Fields played somewhat well. I think the game speeds up for him a little bit too much sometimes. But I think the offense just kind of isn't good in general. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I'd agree with that completely. I think I think the offensive line was probably the best part of the offense, which is <laughs> odd. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah. I mean, it's a makeshift offensive line with mm-hmm. two tackles that should should never touch the field. And like the year. like you said about. Aaron, Rob, I mean, you could kind of just see it in his play that he's just fed up with the whole contract situation yeah. and everything. Yeah, I don't think he's completely uh, used right uh, as far as, like, his routes and stuff like that. He's uh, he's used, like, very short routes and a lot of uh, hitch routes and stuff like that and stuff mm. just close to the line of scrimmage, which is okay every once in a while, but you got to stretch the field. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I don't know. I think Darnell Mooney's outplayed him by far this year. Oh, yeah, you for know? sure. And he's taken over as the best receiver on the team, as, as far as this year goes. Yeah. You know, uh, I know Allen Robinson's obviously still talented, but he's got he's to do he's got to prove it eventually, yeah. you know? Mm, for sure. And then, I mean, with Montgomery down, too, that's a whole other yeah, factor. for sure. I think uh, Damian Williams looked very solid. Mm-hmm. Uh, not this game, obviously, because he didn't play, but, uh, like, in his, in his work that he's gotten. Yeah. And then Khalil Herbert looked very good this yeah, week. Yeah, he looked great. I mean, he had a couple explosive plays where it was yeah. like, wow, this, this guy doesn't even look like a rookie, you know? Yeah, he's got some, he's got some good juice. Mm-hmm. Uh, we talked about him a little bit after the draft uh, in March, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's a very solid running back, especially for the third string. I mean, there's nothing really more you can ask no, for No, seriously, guy. yeah. Uh, I mean, I I was really 
I was really happy with him and the run blocking in general, mm. personally. Um, but besides that, I really didn't see too many receivers uh, busting wide open besides A-Rob in that one play. But uh, Justin Fields explained it in the press conference. And uh, he uh, he kind of already had tucked his head and kind of had to figure out to try to start running. Mm-hmm. Do you, know, you know what I'm talking about? That play where A-Rob was running wide open in the middle of the field? No, I don't think I know. Oh, okay. Well, there was a, there was a play uh, where... Uh, Someone there was like a busted coverage and A Rob literally ran a streak from the slot and there was no one around him but the pressure kind of came kind of quick and collapsed the pocket so Justin Fields had to tuck it and run and he didn't get a chance to get it to him so uh, people were complaining about that but that was like probably the only time I saw A Rob open the whole game yeah. so it's pretty did A Rob say anything about it or no no not really uh, I think he kind of knew because if someone asked Justin about it because on the broadcast they showed a replay of it but I mean it was pretty clear that he really didn't have enough time to get it off to him. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Um, I think with our defense, uh, Mack and Quinn have been like a nice little yeah. combination this they've, year. They've led us leading the NFL in sacks, and mm-hmm. uh, and uh, Travis Gibson's been very solid also, um, mm-hmm. along with uh, other guys like Akeem Hicks got in their first sack, I believe, last game. Eddie Goldman just came back. Uh, so there's some there's some solid offense or defensive line play, along mm-hmm. with uh, Jalen Johnson. Um, it might not sound like that great, but uh, he shadowed uh, Devontae Adams on 20 of 23 routes and only allowed him to 89 yards. Yeah, that's which not is, bad. I mean, for the best receiver in the league. Exactly. Arguably, like you know. anyone else, you'd be like, well, that's not all that great. But when you think about Devontae Adams and his stat lines he's put up this year, that's actually very good. I think Johnson's very underrated, and, and I'd, I'd say he's the best DB on our team currently. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, especially with Eddie Jackson and his antics that he's had lately. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> that's that's a whole nother story. Oh, but, my gosh, dude. Yeah. Um, brutal he's just going he's doing more action on twitter than he is on the field I feel yeah like. uh for him being my favorite player on the bears uh for a few years kind of kind of hurts for the see it but i mean you just got to be honest with yourself at some mm-hmm. point and he's just not the same guy he was no, uh i don't i mean coverage he's bad and yeah i don't i don't know if it's necessarily physical ability because it's not like he's been like super banged up with injuries or anything like that in the past few years it's just I just don't even know like it seems like he's not even strong enough to tackle guys like you yeah know what i mean it's it's a it's an effort thing for me, honestly. Like, he hasn't been in the right place. Like, when he was getting all those turnovers in 2018 and stuff like that, uh, he was seemed to be in the right place at the right time mm-hmm. a lot of the time. You know, he was breaking up passes and, and uh, recognizing coverages and jumping routes and stuff like that. You just don't really see that that much out of no. him anymore. And then uh, in the open field, he kind of just tends to throw his shoulder instead yeah, of the ever wrapping up, ha- ever. He never, never wraps up. He yeah. just tries and it's, to knock the guys down. And it's led to a few embarrassing plays just over in general like he'll come he'll come and just throw his shoulder he'll run into rdb or just miss completely and it'll just be a wide open touchdown and it's just it's kind of embarrassing honestly it is embarrassing especially when it happened against the the rams on prime time he just completely missed the tackle and yeah. it, it was just it was just tough to see like i i don't know uh and then he just there's and that uh, play that could have been a, a Devonte touchdown yeah. last week and there's cli- there's clips in training camp of him getting on like young defensive backs about their tackling and stuff and telling them that anyone could tackle. That's a little uh, it's a tough look, yeah, uh, especially when you're trying to be, yeah you're trying to be a leader and stuff like that, and you're not you're not even taking part yourself. You yeah. gotta lead by example, you know. Yeah. And uh, Jalen Johnson, I don't know if you saw today. Um, I don't. It's kind of a bad sign as far as Nagy in the locker room goes, but he posted a picture of his fine. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, I saw that too. Um, he was like one minute late or something. Yeah. Or not even like as it was turning eight sixteen, they find him like two thousand seven hundred or something. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of scared to see if that leads in anything, but for now, I'm not gonna look too much into it. It's just not a good sign that he's posting it on social yeah. media, you know. But I mean, the defense has overall been okay. Um, the tackling has just been a little annoying at points. I yeah, would say. Uh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, Vildor has not done bad uh, for filling in no, for Trufant, who got cut, and then. Uh, Roquan Smith has been a stud linebacker like he's always been. So, yep. I mean, uh, they've they've held their own. I'd say our offense is just abysmal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it really is. And I mean, it's looked a little better with laser play calling as opposed to Nagy. But it's, yeah, it just goes stale so quick yeah, though. Yeah, That's and, the and our thing. and our O line is kind of it's it's good one week and then the next week they're just. I mean, when you when you face a team like the Browns, of course, you know what I mean. But like, yeah. you can't be that abysmal. Yeah, I yeah I understand that. Uh, Tevin Jenkins, uh, they asked for an update on him today, and they just said they didn't really have anything. Mm-hmm. So that kind of sucks, but uh, he's still just going through rehab, I guess. And then Larry Borum, also no update. 
Uh, so hopefully when those guys come back, the offensive line will have some more stability and uh, they might be a little, they'll get a little more younger and athletic. So that'll mm-hmm. be able to, they'll be able to handle some uh, pass rushers. For sure. Do um, you see the Bears sneaking into the playoffs this year? Uh, no, I, I really don't. don't. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't, I don't see it. I really don't. I, I see eight, nine wins. Uh, I mean, they'd really have to go, go off for 10 in my opinion. Like mm. I, it's just really hard for me in my head to really see that honestly. Yeah, I agree. Um, I could see like either the Rams or the Cardinals be a wild card. Um, honestly, maybe the Vikings over us. Uh, maybe maybe uh panthers or saints i'm seeing yeah damn <laughs> you know I, what i mean i'm seeing sadly i think the seahawks with the makeshift geno smith offense are probably still better than us on offense yeah. honestly so oh, i think yeah, for sure. i think they scrap some more wins together than we do just because of their scheme and playmakers in general to be honest with you yeah and i feel like even though the the seahawks are probably the most dangerous last place team in the entire league yeah he's uh he's out till week 10 russell wilson is so uh they they'll have a ch- i believe week 10 yeah uh maybe a little later than that if if at all but uh, I saw the earliest he could return is then. I know he's going to try his best to get out there. So I think the mm-hmm. Seahawks could easily fill a wild card spot because they just always seem to do. Mm-hmm. And then uh, along with, yeah, I could see the Saints. They're a little up and down, but, I mean, they're still a decent team. And yeah, then, and I think they're they're better than us for sure. Yeah, and then the 49ers just seem to, wait, just fi- seem to find a way to get it done. I think the NFC West could easily take up both spots, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a fair point, I'd yeah. say. Because um, I think the... Uh, yeah, definitely. Actually, now thinking about it, because all those teams are good. Like the Rams and the Cardinals are definitely playoff teams, and then the Forty Niners and Seahawks could easily fight for that last spot. There's uh, are there three wild card spots? Is there? I I forget if they expand the playoffs. Here, yeah, I think this is for this year. Okay. Yeah, I still I still don't see the Bears getting <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, because before last week we were we were sitting in the sixth seed. Um. Oh wait wait so okay so the top. The top seeds have buys. Yeah, there's the three p- division teams, mm. and then there's the expanded playoff. Interesting. So what was it before? Did two teams have buys? Yeah, two teams would always have buys, I believe. Or was it? I think it might have been just. Yeah, it was two. It was yeah, two. Okay. And then. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. Uh, but I, I still, I still see like a team like the Panthers probably getting in over us. Oh yeah, for I sure. just don't have much faith in the Bears like no. staying uh, consistent whatsoever. And they have the toughest schedule in the NFL. Uh, the Packers and the Bears do. So I don't, I don't have much great faith. I think we can beat the Vikings twice. <laughs> the, the Lions. We, yeah, we usually have both of their numbers, but <laughs> I mean, other than that, we're not going to yeah. beat the Packers in the regular season. It's not going to happen. Yeah, the I mean, Bucks. I know we we stole a game from the Bucks last year, but yeah. I think we're going to get. But uh, get crushed this you game. don't you don't see uh, Tom Brady just sitting there looking in the mi- looking in the mirror Sunday morning thinking about the four meme. <laughs> oh then, yeah, for sure. And then he's like, I'm like oh, I lost up, to this team last year. I'm no. putting up forty points. At just, least. <laughs> I, I'm not playing around with them this year. No, I, I don't I don't see good things we in our future as far as that game goes. The Bucks, the Niners, Steelers, we could beat. I think. Yeah. We could definitely steal. I could, I, th- I could see us stealing one from the Niners and the Steelers, but I, I don't see us winning both. No, <laughs> Ravens, you know? we're gonna lose. Yeah, they're just gonna run. I, I don't know. That's just the. I feel like that's a Lamar run for a hundred yard game. Yeah, <laughs> Lions, we could beat. Cardinals, we're gonna lose. Yeah, Packers, Kyler Murray run all over us game. <laughs> Packers lose. I do not see us beating the Seahawks. Uh, what week is that? That's week. 16 because there's yeah. 18 weeks now okay yeah russell will be back yeah. so good luck <laughs> giants we could be yeah then. i see us i don't know though i we have some <laughs> weird we had some weird games against the giants we do remember in uh <laughs> our, our really good season we yeah to cohen throwing the touchdown to anthony miller yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, anthony miller dude catches a touchdown with the texans gets cut the next week yeah i i was very high on him too he was one of my misses uh as far as the draft goes i uh i was a big fan of him but he didn't really pan out the way i'd planned no um but yeah i got the the bears uh eight wins maybe that's that's my realistic. Yeah, I will, we'll probably miss the playoffs by like one game or something. Yeah, like that, yeah, something like that. I don't. Yeah, but that's just so like it just sucks for the draft the next year. You know what I mean? Like yeah. middle of the pack. Yeah, I mean we don't even have our pick anyway, so I'm yeah. just kind of like whatever. 
That's true. The Gi- I just <laughs> a part of me just doesn't even want the Giants to get a good pick. Anthony <laughs> Miller is currently on the Steelers practice squad. Yeah. Um, I mean, interesting. With, they've had some receiver injuries, so yeah. I guess I understand. But I don't have much hope for his NFL career at this no, point. I think he's he seems to get in his way a lot. Yeah. But uh, I mean. Moving on, I think we can move on to some more uh, broad, uh, like power rankings, mm-hmm. uh, top five. Uh, just you could just go ahead and give your list. All uh, right, so at, at one, I have the Cardinals. I think they've just kind of been they were projected to be good, but I think they've just kind of surprised everybody with how solid they are on both sides of the ball this year. Yeah, I mean Kyler Murray is just electric. I mm-hmm. mean he's he's one of the best quarterbacks in the league right now. He's just I don't know. He just has those bang bang plays. You know what I mean? I think he has that it factor. No, yeah, yeah. He can just make plays. And with, I mean, D-Hop, top two wide receiver in the league, I'd say. And then even A.J. Green is someone that's kind of, like, showed up weirdly. Yeah, no, he's been okay, yeah. He's been solid. And then their defense, I mean, they have J.J. Watt. And um, I don't know. They're just, it's just, they just seem like a very complete team. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh I have I have the Bills first. Mm-hmm. Um, I I just personally like them a little more. I mean, I I have the Cardinals at second, so it's not like I'm like disc- discounting them too yeah. much. Uh, but uh, yeah, I have I have the Bills first just because mm-hmm. of uh, they've been a good team for a long time, and I think they've all stayed together for a bit. So I like their I like their chemistry as far as the team mm-hmm. goes, and they're just. They've been that close so many times, so I just feel like I feel like this could be. I know they're year. like they're like building up to a Super exactly. Bowl championship, and I think their defense is a little better than last mm-hmm. year. So I, I'm a, I'm a fan. For me, the Rams I have at second. I think I think they could easily not easily, but they're like one of my top picks for the Super Bowl. Okay, yeah, year. yeah. You know what I mean? Just yeah. with bringing Matt Stafford in and replacing Jared Goff. If they were already a playoff team with Goff, like bringing yeah. in a, a quarterback who's probably like two times at least better than Goff like he's just I don't know yeah like the jump from Goff to Stafford I don't think I don't think people realize how big the jump is no it yeah it's it's massive yeah. uh just the way the offense is run and all that stuff mm-hmm. uh and I think uh the the breakfast club they got going with uh Cooper Cup and Matthew Stafford is uh pretty big for that because oh, you yeah. see you see Cooper Cup's having literally like an, an amazing year yeah like he's on pace to be like best at everything so <laughs> no yeah seriously it's crazy and they're just airing the ball out so well and I mean, yeah, the Rams are just—they might be the most dangerous team in the league. Yeah, I, I, I think they're, uh, they're top three for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I have the Cardinals ahead just, just right now, mm-hmm. uh, just because they beat the Rams. But uh, I could easily see the Rams being better right now. Oh yeah, I, I feel like if, like, when they play again, I, f- I could see the Rams winning. Agreed. Um, and then I have the Bills at three. Obviously, they're just solid. Their defense got better. Josh Allen's top five quarterback in the league he's fantastic um yeah they're just yeah like like we said earlier they're just kind of building up to like this they're gonna win the championship within the next couple years i think no yeah uh i they're in prime position too um hopefully it's not like the 90s with the bills <laughs> just four con- straight yeah continuously making it without success but yeah. i i think i think the the tides are gonna turn very soon me too and then <laughs> we both have the bucks at four i mean they didn't lose any starters from last year you know what i mean super yeah. bowl champs brady's having one of the best years of his career so far which is absolutely absurd for a 44 year old you know yeah, the only the only thing in question here is their secondary health. That's mm-hmm. that's all really it is. Uh, Cause what's his name? Uh, Sean, Sean Murphy, Murphy Bunting. Bunting. Uh, Carlton Davis has been banged up. Jamal Dean has gotten a little banged up. Sherman's banged up too. right? Yeah, and uh, their their safeties have been a little banged up also. So it's it it's been a little tough for them, but their their front seven is still really good, mm. and uh, I think that is a their main focus on defense in my opinion mm-hmm. like as far as stopping the run and then uh just forcing them to pass so they can just they can uh i don't i forget what the term is but just rush the passer like yeah. you know what i mean when, then you, when you know a team can't run the ball it's just easy for them right and then on offense i mean i just feel like they have so many weapons you know oh, what yeah I mean? like you can't even as a defense who do you even focus on it exactly that's why it's it almost feels like a new guy every week scoring mm-hmm. the touchdowns because they're in the red zone like what do you even do and with leonard fournette getting more comfortable in the I offense and save. taking over fournette's been solid no he's been really good yeah. oh last year they had uh, a split between ronald jones and leonard fournette 
And uh, personally, I was on the the Ronald Jones uh, wagon, mm-hmm. uh, thinking that he was the better player. But I mean, at least they settled into a guy who was finally get able to get into a rhythm, you know. And uh, he's been able to settle in. It was just crazy seeing Fournette like absolutely dominate in college, and then kind of coming into the yeah. NFL and struggling a bit. And now it seems like he's kind of settling in, into his own. Especially yeah. Like with playoff Lenny last year, I mean, he had some huge performances. Last yeah. Year. Now this year, he's just been very. He hasn't been necessarily like a great game breaker, but he's just been very solid and very Extremely good. Extremely solid. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the Bucks are definitely a scary team, and if uh, I know they lost to the Rams, that's kind of the reason I have them a little lower, you know. But uh, I think. I think. They I mean, the Rams are no pushover team. No, exactly. I mean. But uh, I mean, I still, yeah, we still have them four, but mm-hmm. I still think that they could definitely be the team that steps up. Mm. And then at five, I have the Ravens. Um, yeah. I just think they're they're just they're just always that dangerous team. Lamar Jackson just he always gives the team a chance to win. You know. Yeah. Uh, he he does he does some uh, some. He has some boneheaded mistakes sometimes uh, throwing the football. For sure. But uh, he's also just unmatched uh, athletically. So I was about to say he, <laughs> he makes up, make he, up with it. Yeah, yeah, he makes up for those mistakes just by being so athletic. Yeah. And they've had close games with some like not so great teams. I mean, yeah. like, just with the lines and everything. But it's like I don't know. I just he's impressed me a lot this year, though. Yeah. Uh, as far as a passer goes, I I was never too uh, like I never believed in him like crazy amount as far as uh, being a passer goes, but mm-hmm. he's proved me wrong so far. And, oh, uh, same here. Yeah, yeah I I'll, I'll give him props for that. I've uh, I've been impressed by him. And um, they handled the Chargers. Yeah, this I know. Past week. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about it. I think I'm gonna have to put the Ravens at five and then the Chargers at six. Uh-huh. Uh, I know it's only a top five, but I just had to mention the Chargers because yeah. I'm a big fan of them. Uh, I think the only problem with the Chargers that is really big for me is. Uh, being able to run the, or stop the run, mm-hmm. uh, and that's just the worst possible matchup they could have against yeah, the, Ravens the Ravens. Who just run the ball more than everyone else. Yeah. So yeah, seriously. So it's yeah, right. I, it's just so the Ravens backfield. It's like Devonte Freeman, Le'Veon Bell, Latavius, uh, Latavius Murray. Murray. Are we in 2015? You yeah, know what I, mean? I know. <laughs> I mean, it, they've they've been getting the job done, but I think it's partly attributed just because of the uh, the RPOs they run. And oh yeah, for the, sure, with Lamar reductions. running so much, it kind of just like the, it it leaves and, the <laughs> defense out to dry. Yeah, most NFL running backs are doing well in that scheme. Personally, like yeah. honestly, to yeah. be honest with you, uh, I mean. They're still a scary team, though, because their offensive line is nasty and their defense is always just going to be solid. It's the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah. Like, it's literally been that for the past 20 years. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> like the Ray Lewis, Ed Reed days. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, that's our top five for the NFL. Yeah. Um, it'll be interesting to see how, because it's still early in the season. So, exactly. We'll see what happens. Uh, basketball opening night, we had the Bucks and the Nets yesterday. I mean, Giannis kind of picked up right where he left off. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's. Typical uh, NBA basketball, just <laughs> the superstar takes over the game and yeah. it's kind of over with, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, they they just kind of kept, yeah, where they left off, you know, and with, the, with the, the championship. With the whole Kyrie thing going on, I mean, who knows? The Nets will be fine, but I don't know. Yeah. Who's uh, to say if he's going to play at all this year? I... I'd give it like a twenty percent chance that yeah. he plays. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, it's just it, he giving me some w- weird vibes. Not oh yeah, lie. for sure. And then Steve Nash was saying how like they're prepared to have him only play away games, and it's like That's how is that so gonna odd. work? Yeah, I don't, I don't know how that team chemistry aspect goes. Like, I don't know, I don't know how the players feel about that, like his teammates and stuff like that, because they're obviously not gonna say if they're too mad, you know. Yeah, but especially a guy like KD or Harden, you know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's a little, yeah, I don't know, I. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a weird topic to talk about because it's so like it's it's so controversial but yeah. at the same time it's like the Kyrie is a very unpredictable guy. He, like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean he's been like that for the past 5 years. Yeah, I mean ever <laughs> since he went to the Celtics I'd, I'd say especially, you know. Yeah. Just with the whole him and LeBron thing. I think ever since then he I don't know, he's just clear he's a he's his own he's an individual. No, yeah, he's he's definitely a specimen, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. Uh I mean if he if he wants to stand by uh by whatever he feels, then I'm not gonna question that. Yeah. But uh just him in general, just his plan, like I, I just wish he was a little more transparent about it because he's just kind of he's a very vague guy, you know. Extremely vague. So yeah. it's it's uh it has me questioning what's what's gonna happen because no one really even knows what's And when he is happen. playing, I mean he's one of the best point guards in the league, but Oh yeah, it's exactly. Like it's never been an issue of play with him, it's always been an issue of how much he's gonna play. That and just what what's what's going what's through happened. his head and all that yeah. stuff, yeah. yeah but you so. know, uh it well it's remains to be seen i'd mm-hmm. say <laughs> and then the lakers 
including the preseason, have yet to win a game this year. They're 0-7. But yeah. they're 0-1 in regular season. They played the Warriors, who are not a bad team. No, I think the Warriors are definitely going to squeak into the playoffs this mm-hmm. year, in my opinion, especially when Clay comes back. I think they're going to they're gonna be a very solid team that you don't want to see. For sure. And then with Russ kind of struggling in his opener and everything, I mean, it's the first game of the season, so not it's yet. not really I'm a not, big deal. I'm not worried whatsoever, personally. Mm-hmm. And as a Russ stan, I uh, stand with him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he'll, I mean, he'll have games like that. Even Bron said that he's like, he's like, he's so hard on himself. And I told him just like, don't be so hard. It's yeah, your first game out. here and everything. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, everyone has games like this. He's just, he's a very, uh, he plays a lot off momentum. So yeah, if he makes a one, he's gonna, competitor. yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna start getting to a groove, and he's just not gonna, he's not gonna be stopped. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and the Lakers just have so much experience and 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 so much talent that they'll be at the, one of the top seeds this year. Exactly, I agree. Um, so yeah, I mean those were the games yesterday, right? Yeah, there were only two. Yeah. So uh I besides that, um all the other games are gonna be today. Well mm-hmm. most of the games will be today. And uh there's some there's some exciting games I would say. Um well for us personally, I know we're excited about the Bulls and Pistons just to see how regular season play goes with yeah. this new core. And I mean not I mean, I'm sure we're favored in this game anyways, but no yeah, K- for sure. No Cade Cunningham, that's even better for us. <laughs> yeah. Number one overall pick. Um Pistons are kind of just, I feel like, a lost franchise right now. Yeah, I mean, they're starting good with obviously getting the number one pick in Cade Cunningham. They got some decent young pieces, but they're still a ways away. Mm -hmm. And then Uh, the Bulls, I mean, how many? I think since the new GM took over, we only have, like, two players from that team. Mark Eversley, yeah. Yeah. I I don't see... I I it's I think it's it's, uh, uh, it's, it's Zach Levine and Kobe White I think that's it yeah no yeah nobody else is new um I mean last year we had a few more obviously but that we cut bait with them and I honestly am not mad at it because I mean those guys were here during the rebuild so what you expect mm-hmm. to do with the bridge guys with the rebuild is replace them with upgrades so yeah I mean they've they've done just that in a short amount of peri- uh, short and like period shipping of off Markin and who was supposed to be kind of the savior of the city I mean he didn't it just didn't pan out it's it's all right I mean. Uh, I like I like a lot of the guys we have now oh, way yeah, more sure. obviously. Lonzo and, uh, Ball pickup is just I mean I, everybody likes him I feel like because the name but like yeah. you don't realize how important that piece is to have because we didn't have a true point guard. Yeah, I can't wait to see how he fully meshes with the team, especially with a guy like Vucevic who uh, is big down in the post. So. Yeah, and then having Kobe off the bench, I mean he, that's where he thrives. You know what I mean? Exactly, he could feast on second units and, all day. And like you said, him and him and Levine when they're on the floor together, it just didn't really work out. And no, then Lonzo's didn't. a great facility of the game and just he controls the pace and everything. Very unselfish, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I I really like it a lot. So and then having Demar there, I mean that's a guy that's just been solid forever. Yeah. He's just a, a bucket, mm-hmm. is what you would call. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I mean, uh, I expect them to be a a middle of the pack slash better yeah, team, like, yeah, like borderline top seed. ten. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I I like that though. I I think uh, I think it's gonna be the best season we've had probably in like five years at yeah. least. So. I think since the Rondo D Wade team. Yeah, so it was that four or five years. Yeah, I think it was twenty sixteen. Yeah, yeah, so uh, just about. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, I we were also gonna do uh, power rankings for the NBA. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I I think mine. I mean, it's pretty. It's kind of easier for the NBA because it's just kind of. I'd say uh, so. It's a very superstar driven league. So yeah. uh, personally, I have uh, the Bucks at one. Yep. Um, the Nets at two. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Lakers at three. Yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> I know, right? Uh, the the Suns at four, and then uh, the Jazz at five. I mean, that's uh, yeah, that's pretty fair. I, I I'd put the Jazz at four and the Suns at five. I just feel okay. like the Suns kind of had a, they had a really like a lot of things went right for them in the playoffs. Like a I feel 2020 like Miami year. Heat year. Yeah, almost. Yeah. But they're still a very solid team. Uh, some other teams you could kind of throw up there is like the Nuggets with a healthy Jamal Murray. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but he's coming off a torn ACL. I got a funny team. What team? The uh, Philadelphia 76ers. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, they're an- talk about another mess. You got the Kyrie <laughs> thing going on in Brooklyn, and then the Ben Simmons thing in in, That's in Philly. So he funny. didn't he didn't play a preseason game, and <laughs> he's saying how he's like, oh, I, I can't play here anymore because they don't allow me to 
thrive as a – and then he's just back. Like, shoot. Shoot a basketball, please, Ben. Yeah, I'm begging I'm begging of you, and shoot. Joel is just – he's like, I just don't care. Like, <laughs> we, we, like, we don't even talk about it. Did you see the clips of him at practice? Yeah, he just nobody's... did not care at all. Yeah. <laughs> he literally was just – he was just standing there. He was he had his phone in his pocket during practice. Yeah. He was just – he was And wearing, he was, like, wearing a hoodie or something. He was wearing something completely different from everyone else. Yeah. He just – he was, like, not showing effort. He was just, like, not caring at all. And he got sent home and got suspended, which is kind of funny. He got um, sent home from the practice. Yeah, they sent him home yesterday, and uh, he they I think they just suspended him. Like they're just like, well, just go, just like I I don't want to see you anymore. I don't blame them because it's just ruining the clubhouse, the clubhouse like it's baseball, the the locker room culture. Yeah, uh, I don't. I honestly just just cut, just get whatever you can at this point because yeah. it's only gonna ruin your team even more the longer he stays. You know. Yeah, I feel like he's like at an awkward point where he's like, no, they didn't make a trade or anything, so it's like he's like, well, I kind of have yeah. to stay, but he. He clearly doesn't yeah. want to, and what, the other teammates don't want him there either. What's what's with the Sixers in this drama? I don't like uh, like the Jimmy Butler. Like this is giving me like the Jimmy Butler third string vibes with a with a, a less alpha tone to it. You know, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, the, the with, with the him and the Minnesota Timberwolves. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like I I don't know what it is. Uh, mm-hmm. And then Jimmy, as a result, went to the 76ers, which is kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> It's just, and then he was like forced out of there because Simmons didn't want him there anymore. It was yeah, just exactly. Like, I don't. Think he's a prima donna, yeah, diva, whatever you want to call him, and he's. It's like he's not even good enough to have that kind of mindset. No, you know yeah. what I mean? I, he's an all star, but at the same time, he just in the playoffs he gets taken away. I I think I've preached this this uh this topic before. It's just it's hard to win with guys like that. You can't win a championship with a guy like that yeah. leading your team, you know it's, what I mean? Yeah, it's and just no. I mean overall Embiid's a better player than yes. Ben Simmons by far. And he's less of a diva. I know he like he voices out on Twitter and talks smack Which and all is that fine, stuff, but, but he's like he's less of a a locker room cancer, you He's a say. team player still, even though he's kind of like dramatic sometimes you could say yeah, but, but like he's just passionate nba you know? players yeah exactly i think it's like a kevin durant kind yeah, of player i think he fits so well with the damian lillard it's just too bad he's just in portland and he just he's committed to them i mean good for who him would, but who would fit well with Dame? damian Dam- damian lillard and Embiid would fit well together yeah. i think with their personalities but i mean i don't see it happening for the foreseeable future but yeah that's that's the like that's the the trade that everyone wanted in philly but i mean who wants ben simmons so you know what i mean i i don't know the lack <laughs> of shooting in well, the like, playoffs is like I can see a match I can see why you would want him but like at the same time it's like it's with where he's at right now too. for the for the asking costs especially yeah. you know like if he was not as expensive as they 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 saw him to be uh he would be he would be somewhere else right now but mm. they're just they're asking for way too much they're they're asking for that potential superstar that few that uh that former no- number overall pick they're like still holding on to those labels for him yeah. it feels like you know you just gotta kind of take the value as he is now yeah you know? and he's good but he's not he's not that <laughs> yeah exactly it's almost like drafting someone early in fantasy football and you just kind of hold on to that you're round like, you drafted you're like him but in. i drafted him fifth yeah exactly but it's week nine and he's he's been an rb2 the whole time yeah. that's what it feels like you yeah. know what i mean like yeah seriously <laughs> But I don't know. It's just it's very toxic. I'm happy that I'm not a Philly fan. So yeah, <laughs> but I, I feel bad for them for sure. Exactly. Um, um, I think that should be good for the NBA, right? Yeah, it's uh, still kicking off, so there's not too many mm-hmm. crazy storylines until we see them. You know. Speaking of kicking off, the NHL season also started. Yep. Um, the Blackhawks are kind of a mess. Yeah, I mean they they had some high hopes coming into the season with uh, some big signings yeah. and some big trades. Tyler Johnson, two back to back Stanley Cup winner. You got Flurry, who won Goalie of the Year last year. You got Seth Jones, who's quote unquote an elite defender that we picked up, yeah. and his brother. Yeah, <laughs> and his brother, even though he's hurt. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we also had Kirby Doc's brother. We drafted, but I think he's we in traded the, him. I believe. Yeah, I think we traded him. Yeah. So we had two brothers on the team for a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. I mean maybe that's maybe that's what threw off the mojo. Um well, maybe, but <laughs> there's a lot of issues with this team. Colleton head coach, he needs to go. Like I know people were calling for Nagy's head. I st- I still think he has some okay aspects as a head coach. Colleton has no clue what he's doing. I mean, we fired Quenville when he was 
500 that year, like eight games into the season. And then uh-huh. Collison kind of just got thrown in there because he was the he was the AHL head coach. Yeah. Ever since he's be, he's been there, the team has just been terrible. We really dropped the ball on that one. Yeah. I would say. Um, yeah, seriously. <laughs> like it's you heard like on the Barstool podcast. I'm yeah. sure they were talking it's about it. Never, yeah, it's never been it's never been good since. Like yeah. it's it's literally just been a big mistake. Mm-hmm. Like just like one bad dream that we just haven't woke up from. Honestly, and ever I, since. I feel like he's kind of just letting like Kane and Taze run the team and it's that's not fine i feel like in, in the no. nba you can get away with that i feel no. like yeah. but in the nhl like you need to, the coach the head coach is so important yeah and kane and taze don't play with everyone on the team you know what i mean yeah. because the lines are different and there's so many other there's so many more people on a, a hockey team and in hockey one superstar is not going to kind of take over the game exactly you so, know what i mean so there's so many other contributors and it's not a superstar league as much as mm-hmm. it is as in other leagues like you see superstar players on bad teams and they just they're just stuck in mediocrity yeah. all the time you know what i mean yeah. in the nba it's never like that so yeah. it's you can't you can't do that you know <laughs> you yeah. can't just have a, a pushover coach and it never works being out like oh that. three and one I mean our defense has been horrendous our our penalty kill and our power play have been all right uh-huh. but when we're five on five our offense is just horrendous they yeah. can't set up in the zone they just look lost and our defense they, they don't know where to be half the time yeah do you I, feel like it's the lack of structure or do you think it's just sloppy play uh I think lack of structure is causing sloppy play. Okay. I just think there's no leadership, like, okay. outside of the players, mm-hmm. which is obviously, like, with Kane and Taze, you're going to have that. But just, like, Carlton just needs to go. He's – he's, I'd say he's the worst head coach in the league right yeah. now. Do you think he's a, a midseason fire, or do you think they just have to ride it out? I think he's a mid, I think he's a now fire. He should be a now fire. He mm-hmm. should be a me, midseason fire. I, I, I mean, so, just throw somebody else in there. You know? So that's your opinion. Do you think that happens, like, realistically? No, because Bowman's just – he's very <laughs> – yeah. Very stingy because you know he's he had he brought the team these three championships. That was yeah. six years ago, buddy. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, he's you got can't hold on to that. He's forever. giving off some uh, Jerry Krause vibes. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah he's the, super uh, stingy. Holding on. And and he's he's thinks very highly of himself because it's like with Krause, you didn't win that. Okay, the players <laughs> went out yeah. and won that. Exactly. The Blackhawks had a disgusting roster with a great head coach, and. Yeah, you may have put part of that team together, but like that's on the players. That's not on you, dog. Yeah, you you struck gold and you're holding on to that 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 gold for way too long, you know. And like he he was talking about rebuilding a couple years ago, but then he's still like holding on to some key players yeah, and like I know. slowly like one year we'd get rid of Seabrook, then we'd get rid of Keith, then we'd get rid of like yeah. Hosa would be. It's like he's slowly breaking down I feel like you you either clean house or you hold on to most of the roster yeah. and try it one more time. Yeah, I think uh, they got some good pieces that they they got over the summer, but mm-hmm. at the same time, uh, there's still supplemental like pieces that they probably should have acquired. And uh, the defense is what we needed to focus on. We went yeah. out and got Seth Jones, but outside of that, we didn't really do all that much. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? So it's just we're stuck in a limbo right now. And at o three and one, I mean, it's just. Just starting the year off with four losses, I mean, it's just, it's brutal. Yeah, I mean, you know. I mean, the head coach got booed by fans on national (laughs) TV. First ESPN game we've had in, like, probably 20 years, so. Yeah, it's starting to turn into a Jim Boylan situation uh, with the the more talented roster, which is even worse. Yeah, seriously. It's, It's a mess, so we'll see what happens. I, I don't know, I just don't even see the Hawks making the playoffs this year. Yeah. Who knows what's gonna happen with Kane and Taze after this year? If I mean, if we have a horrendous year, I don't know. It's just it's, not a good sign. It's not good right now. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to talk about? Or no, that's about it for now. I'd say there's a decent amount going on in the sports world right now. I mean, obviously, yeah. everybody's attention is gonna be on baseball until the season ends. Yeah, and, for uh, sure. Because the other two seasons are kind of just getting started. I mean, football's still in the first half as well. So. Yeah. Um, it's gonna be awesome. A lot I more think. excitement to come for the base for the the next couple of weeks for baseball. It's it's gonna be awesome. Yeah. Um, thank you guys for joining us this week. Uh, you could access this episode on the glacier, mm-hmm. and um, we'll probably have guests next week. Hopefully, so look forward to that. And uh, thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you next week. Peace.